Good morning, my name is Tina Ray Floyd. I am the genealogist in the Georgia Heritage Room of the Augusta Richmond County Public Library. And today I'm going to do a live tutorial on Ancestry Library Edition. The Ancestry Library Edition is a resource available to patrons. Typically you can only use it when you're in a library facility, but during this pandemic, the company has allowed us to make it accessible to you uh, from your home. So the steps I walk you through today will be something you can do as soon as you finish watching this video. Uh, so to get started, we, you want to go to the library's main homepage, which is www.arcpls.org. And there are a couple of ways you can access the, uh, the program. The long way is through Galileo, which is uh, this widget button down here. Or the shortcut, which I prefer, is to go to our Georgia Heritage Room tag and scroll down to the second entry, which is Ancestry Library Edition. Now from home, you'll, you will need to use the uh, password for Galileo, and you can call the library to get that password as it does change from time to time. So just keep that in mind. Once you are in, then you have access to over 10,000 records. Most people like to click on the green begin search button, type in the name of the ancestor they're looking for and some basic information and just kind of see what comes up. And this is definitely good for our beginners or people who have not uh, done genealogy research before. Um, but for those that have used this a couple of times, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to access records that are not indexed. So the first thing is this home button. Like I said, this is your, your main page. You have quick links down here at the bottom, which will allow you to go immediately to a particular record set. So if you want to just search on city directories, you can click that quick link and it'll take you right there and then you can filter to the US or wherever, whichever country you're interested in and um, begin searching that way. Additionally, they have census records, which are easily accessible. These are for the US census records, um, but they start at 1940 and work backwards. So you can link directly to whichever uh, year you're looking for. And the last thing, oh, they changed it. Uh-oh, okay, all right. Anyway, so that's the home page. The next page is your search page, and this, ha this drop-down menu has quite a, a few categories. Again, you can pick a few topics like census and voter lists or uh, military to get directly to that, or you can go into the card catalog. So once it loads up here, okay, there we go. So as you can see, the card catalog has 10,498 databases in this. Each blue link is one database, and each database can have anywhere from a few dozen to a few million records in them. So, um, so you have a lot of information right at your fingertips. The thing that is important to note, like I said before, is that not everything is indexed. So if you type in a name and it doesn't come up, it might be because it's not indexed. So it's always a good idea to go into the card catalog and just see what kinds of record groups are there. On the left hand side are the various filters that you can utilize. Again, um, you can filter it by the type of records that it is, filter it by the location that you want to search, or filter it by the, the century if you have a very specific time frame in mind that you want to look through. You can also do uh, keyword searches. So if you say, for example, slave schedules, which is a record group that is no longer indexed, by the way, um, then you could type in the keyword and it'll filter out until you look for just what you need. 
so it well maybe they did make it searchable again hold on no they did not if the items in, are in blue, that means it has been indexed. So when you're on that beginning screen and you type in a name, it'll come up. But otherwise, you'll have to search page by page. So that is, they change it back and forth. So I can't tell you from t day to day when it's going to be like that. The other thing you can do on the search page is you can search by map. And this is a get another good way of getting access to the records that are not indexed. So we'll go into Georgia here, for example. And this is all of the record groups that they have pertaining to this state, various categories. And again, not all of them are uh, indexed. So we'll choose this naturalization record, for example. And Let's look at Savannah. When it comes up, down here on the bottom, you can see the film, the microfilm that it was used to create the database here. So you can scroll through very quickly if you happen to know exactly what image number it is that you're looking for. Not everybody does, but that is a nice little trick for you. And then zoom out a little bit so you can read that. And you can see this is this is a naturalization uh, record for a Philip Oster, and it is dated 1843. Um, but again, you would not have found this if you had just typed in that name. So it's important that you really take your time and search through the different databases that may apply to your ancestors. So that's what you can do as far as searching goes. Under the message boards are a variety of conversations that have occurred among um, subscription ancestry uh, users over the years. This is really nice because maybe somebody has asked a question that you're trying to get answered. So if you type in a surname of your family, for example, you may find, wait, what did I do? You may find that there are various topics that you can go and read through and somebody may have already answered that question for you. So this is a really great way to, to just see what other people have done in their research and whether or not it would apply to your particular situation. Okay. You can also search by topic. So if you want to look for, if you want to look, um, say, the Civil War, then you can find various conversations of whichever state you're interested in and see what information is in there. Some people will list out ideas that you could do um, using Google or other online search engines. So that's why it's always nice to go through the message boards and see what you can find. The Learning Center is really helpful for people that are just getting started or looking to maybe specialize in African American research or military research or just try to get some more tips and tricks on um, something that is pertinent to your, your research. Additionally, there are maps that you can access and this is helpful because then you can see the help aids on the left and sh that help show you the uh, evolution of a state's counties and uh, borders. A lot of times people get frustrated in their research because they think their family moved and it turns out it wasn't the family th that moved, it was the border. So knowing, knowing when those things happened can really help you uh, get a better sense of what was going on in your ancestor's lifetime.
For the charts and forms, this is helpful for being able to keep track of your information, keep yourself organized. It is good to know how to do the paper and pencil method of uh, documentation because not all repositories will allow you to bring in a, an electronic device. So if you have to use a binder and pencil and paper, then you know, already know how to do it. These forms are not copyrighted, so you can print off as many as you need. They have the pedigree chart, the family group sheet, a, a list for keeping track of which sources you've researched. Sometimes people find it helpful to uh, make a calendar and keep track of when they've sent letters to various repositories and what those responses were. That way you're not trying to do the same thing over and over again. And there was, wait a minute, where are the census forms? Research extract. They have taken away the census forms. There used to be blank census forms on here, but I don't see them anymore. Finally, the card catalog, again, shows, you can sh uh, filter it to show items that have been updated or recently added to Ancestry Library Edition. Um, it's always good to see when items have been updated because if you searched through that database before and didn't find anything, if you come back and find that it's been updated, maybe now there will be some information in there for you to access. So um, this is a good way to keep track of how, uh, what records are available to you and whether or not they are still being um, added to or not. So I think that is everything. Okay. I hope this was helpful for you, and again, my name is Tina Ray Foy. If you have any questions, you can call us at the Georgia Room at area code 706-826-1511. Thanks.